What's good, y'all? Dr. Trey Hunter. So in our lifetime, we've seen a whole lot of different health crazes, right? We've seen keto, we've seen acai bowls. Now, everywhere you go, you're seeing gluten-free products, and you're over here thinking, when the hell is gluten in the first place? <laughs> so today, what we're going to talk about is gluten, why you need to be mindful of gluten, especially if you have celiac disease, but also why you need to be mindful of gluten, even if you don't got celiac disease. Hey, guys. My name's Michelle. Nita. So first things first, what is gluten? Gluten is basically a part of a plant protein, okay? So gluten is literally the protein part of the plant. A lot of people don't know, when you're eating bread and all that stuff, you're eating a nutritional label and it says, oh, I got four grams of carbs, whatever the case may be. Ironically, because it's coming from a plant source, believe it or not, your body is not gonna be able to extract four grams of protein from that bread. Why? The majority of that gluten, your body cannot break down. That's why if you're somebody who's really trying to build muscle and tone up, you need to have more animal-based proteins to make it easy on yourself. Why? Because your body can convert the majority of the protein that you see on that label to actual protein and actual tissue on the human body, your hair, your skin, your nails, etc. right? When you get in a lot of plant-based proteins, majority of the components of the plant-based protein is in the fibrous material. But ironically, we don't have the right and proper digestive enzymes to break this protein down. So from now on, anytime you're getting any type of protein derived from a plant-based source, I want you to say, I'm only getting 60% of this plant-based protein. So what does that mean? If you eat a protein-based bread and it got 10 grams of protein, that means you're really only gonna get six. Or if you're eating a plant-based product and it got 20 grams of protein, what I want you to really say is, you know what, I'm only getting 12 grams of protein, all right? And the main reason why, once again, there's nothing wrong with your body, is the fact that we do not possess the digestive enzymes to break down this fibrous material. Majority of the protein from plant is composed in fibrous material. All right, the human body cannot really break down fiber in the first place. When you're eating things like bread that has gluten in it, they also contain things called lectins. Lectin is actually a protein. Gluten is a lectin, okay? What is the problem with lectins in the first place? First things first, lectins can bind to your cells, all right? So we all have these things called myides in our cells. Every cell has a myide. It got a glycoprotein in it, and on the top of it, it got a hard portion of it, okay? Which means what? Things can bind to it. What lectins do, they interfere with a lot of absorption in the human body, such as phosphorus, zinc, calcium, iron. Ironically, if you're somebody who's anemic, you need that iron, okay? If you're somebody that is always kind of sickly, you need that zinc. You see what I'm saying? So lectins naturally interfere with the absorption of the things that you actually need to be a healthy human being. But not also that is the case, it can also bind with cells. And that's not only the case, the main reason why gluten is a problem is the fact that it can actually make your gut more permeable. What does that mean? When you eat some bread, right? Of course, it's gonna go down to your esophagus, it's gonna break down in your stomach, and now it's hitting the small intestine, right? Your small intestine, we got these things called epithelial cells, and these line the small intestines. But here's the thing. The whole purpose of your small intestine is to make sure that it's extracting nutrients, giving it to cells, right? And things that's supposed to stay in your hollow tube, which is your esophagus, your small intestines, your large intestines, food, it's staying and the nutrients is getting extracted and going into the bloodstream. Here's the problem with gluten. So when you're eating things that contains lectins in it, such as gluten, your body's gonna break down this lectin, gluten, or we germ agglutinin into something called gliadin. Your body cannot break down gluten any more than gliadin. So once gliadin is in your system, what the gliadin actually does, is actually going to bind to a receptor in your epithelial cells called CXCR3, all right? Kind of nerdy, but it is what it is. Basically allows your body to produce more zonulin. What's the problem with that? So what zonulin does, Anytime you have any type of inflammation or an upset stomach or something, your body needs to make sure that it contains and basically get rid of this issue. 
right? That's what we have an immune system for. So what Zyulin does, if you have something going wrong in your stomach area, what's gonna happen is your body's gonna allow these B cells, T cells, and allow your immune system to fight against it. That's simple. When gliadin is actually being binded to your epithelial cells and to your CXCR3 receptor, what's gonna happen is instead of your immune system coming in, it's allowing bacteria and pathogens and or lipopolysaccharides to come through. 70-80% of your immune system is hosted in your gut area. Why? Majority of the bacteria you come across is things that we eat. What gliadin does, it opens up the door to allow bacteria to come through. We have these epithelial cells and they're actually brought together through something called a tight junction. What the tight junction does, it basically makes sure that the things that stay in your stomach, stays in your stomach, and the things in the bloodstream, stays in the bloodstream. It's this lectin coming from gluten that's making things open up. And when your gut is permeable, what's gonna happen is now you're allowing pathogens and endotoxins and gram-negative bacteria to enter your bloodstream. This is the start of all autoimmune diseases. I'm talking about alopecia, psoriasis, asthma, rheumatoid arthritis, Hashimoto's, majority of them stem from leaky gut or a permeable gut. And the main root cause for this is what? Gluten. So let's say you're somebody who doesn't have celiac disease. A lot of people who got celiac disease, they have an adverse effect when they have gluten is because their body is not able to tolerate gluten. Just like if you're lactose intolerant, your body doesn't have the galactose enzymes to break down lactose. Same thing applies here. That's why for some people, there is, is inflammatory because you don't got the proper digestive enzymes to break it down. Same thing applies with gluten. Now, here's the thing. Some people can tolerate gluten better than others, right? Like some people can tolerate strawberries than others. Some people are allergic to strawberries. Some people are not. Some people are allergic to seafood. Some people are not. It's all about your genetic profile. Where do autoimmune diseases come from? Three things have to happen. One, you got to pick the wrong parents. And last time I checked, nobody can pick their own parents, right? Two, you have to have leaky gut in any form or fashion. Three, you also need to have lectins to exacerbate the issue. You continue to open up the door. And now bacteria is able to keep going inside your bloodstream. And now your immune system has to defend itself against this bacteria. So what your immune system is going to do? Your immune system is going to create antibodies against it. Every cell on your body basically has something called an antigen. What this antigen does, it basically allows your body to figure out, hey, is this cell a part of our system or is this a foreign invader? Lectins are able to do something called molecular mimicry, which means what? So it's kind of like you're playing pickup basketball. Sometimes when you're playing pickup basketball, five on five, you just learned about these people five seconds ago. So sometimes you might pass to the wrong teammate, right? Same thing applies with antigens and antibodies. Your antibodies is being created to basically fight against this pathogen or this bacteria, but because of molecular mimicry, it kind of resembles one of your other cells in your body, right? It got the same antigen profile to it. So now your body, every single time it sees this antigen, no matter what it is, no matter what team it plays for, your cells or bacteria, we're gonna go ahead and fight against it. Now you got Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which means what? Now your own antibodies is attacking your thyroid. Now you got rheumatoid arthritis, which means what? Your own antibodies is attacking your synovial cells and your synovial fluid in your joints. Long story short, all these things stem from leaky gut. And things that are supposed to stay inside your stomach and your small intestine is leaking out. All these things happen because of gluten getting broken down to gliadin, gliadin attaching itself to the CXCR3 receptor to produce zonulin. And now bacteria that's supposed to stay in the stomach is leaving out. If you ever seen somebody who wasn't allergic to something in particular, but then once they got older, they're now allergic to that, that's because of leaky gut. Now, is bread the only offender? No, bread is not the only thing with lectins in it. Potatoes got lectins in it. Nightshades got lectins in it. Red peppers got lectins in it. Eggplants got lectins in it. Beans got lectins in it. Seeds got lectins in it. Basically, anything that's majority of plant-based products got lectins in it. Why? What a lectin does, it is a natural pesticide. Simple. A plant cannot defend itself. But what a plant can do, it can basically create some chemicals that pushes its predators away from it.
It could paralyze animals, or I could make animals start having some cognitive dysfunction, or I can go ahead and make sure that you eat this plant, you die. Simple. A plant is trying to be on this earth as long as possible, just like me and you try to be on this earth as long as possible. I have to make sure that less people, less bugs, less animals eat me. Humans, we can run away. Humans, we can fight. Animals, they got claws, they got fangs. They don't need anything chemically to stop people from eating them. But plants don't got none of that. Plants are stationary. Plants cannot move. But what I can do, if you eat me, I'm gonna make sure you don't eat me again. So. Is gluten the worst thing in the world? No. But what gluten possesses can be deleterious to the human body. Does that make sense? Which is the lectin. Cool? Just so you can go ahead and recap, if you have in gluten, the main reason why gluten products usually are bad is not because the gluten itself, it's because of the lectin protein that's actually binded up inside the gluten. And what this gluten protein does, it literally goes into your esophagus, breaks down in your stomach, produce something called gliadin that's gonna make your gut more permeable. That means that your immune system has to work harder to fight against the pathogen because the door is always open. Make sense? That's why I always say bread out of all the carbs is the worst carb, period. It's the most refined, it's the one that's the most enriched, and it's the one that actual human being really doesn't need at all. It's just good with a sandwich. And we're Americans, so we like sandwiches. Cool. That's your reset tip of the day. Let's go ahead and say snatch all the time. Know in the summertime. Talk to you soon. Ooh, that was.